Hey there folks, let's uh, go ahead and practice using our G12, G13 circular pocket routine on these uh, on this Haas mill here. So we have our um, program that I typed in real kind of quick here. It, it, uh, basically we got our safety line, we have a tool change, um, wrap it to zero zero, turn on the spindle, uh, set our height offset, and go down to a Z level, 0.4. And then slow down our rates. And I'm plunging into um, some material, but we're just going to use this wax. Really the best way to do a good circular pocket is to have a pre-drilled hole that you go into. And that would be ideal. Um, but uh, so I come in here, just kind of into uh, the material, just a 50 thou. Uh, I'm going to switch into incremental mode. I know we don't use incremental mode that much. And then we're gonna go, and the reason for this is I'm gonna do depths. So I'm gonna do these circular pockets at three depths. And by doing G91, it allows me to do the depths. If I just wanted to do one pass, uh, one depth only, really just don't even need, you just keep it in G90. So there's our G13 call out for our, um, this is a counterclockwise circular pocket because on pockets, uh, this will be a, a um, climb cutting. So you have to go counterclockwise on the inside of a pocket to do climb cutting. I, this is my starting radius. So the, the bit we're using is a 3 8 flat end mill. And so we have our, um, it's gonna come over just a quarter of an inch. So you think about that radius, the, the, the end mill itself already has a diameter, or excuse me, a radius of 3 16 So that's just kind of just starting off nice and easy um, into the circular pocket. A feed rate, I'm going through wax. So <laughs> 100 is uh, plenty slow <laughs> for wax. Uh, and then we have a K. This is our finish circle radius, uh, 0.75. The material we have is two inches wide. So that would make a diameter of a circle of 1.5. Um, and then our depth and our Z negative 0.1, so just 100 thou. <clears throat> We're already at 50 thou, so it'll go just a little bit further, but the incrementing down, right? So we're at 0.05 plus 0.1, so it'll be at negative 0.15. And then each success of depth, it'll go that much further. And that's why that G91, every time it loops through this, it's going to go down another 100 thou. The Q. This is our uh, overlap, uh, in other words, our, our cut depth radially though, as it goes around the pocket. So each time it goes around, it's gonna take another 100 thou off. So you can kind of think of that as the, uh, uh, kind of like the, the width of cut, you know, on doing these pockets. So L3, that means do three loops, do this three times. Each time you're gonna increment the Z another 0.1 and I'm in the middle, so that's why it works. So if you had an L here and left it in G90, it does nothing. So you gotta have to have that, uh, for that L to work, you gotta be in G91 to do anything. And then D is just a call out for the diameter of the tool. Notice I go right back into absolute mode. I, I raise the Z up to a safe level, turn off the spindle, um, and in rapid home, Z and Y and turn off the program. So there's our quick little circular pocket program with the whole meat of it right in that G13. So let's set it up. Let's go ahead and get um, a have the pocket all going in uh, at zero, zero. So I want my zero origin. I just want to put in this in the center of this block. And so we have a probing routine that will probe and find the center of a block. Put the probe in. F3, do my probe. And I want to probe. First thing I do, um, now vice corner, you guys are getting spoiled by this vice corner. It, cor it, it, it gets you the origin in the corner of, the, of the, your material and it does the Z height. When you do a rectangular block to find the center of a block, it does not do the Z. You have to do the Z separately. So I'm going to start off with this. And vice corner is the only one that sets your Z offset. All these other ones here, you have to figure it out. You have to do it separately. So let's go ahead and run that routine. So 
I'm going to probe that top surface. I just tell it to look for one inch down. Cycle start. All right, now my Z is done. Now let's go do that rectangular block. So you can do like a pocket or you can do a block. Well, I have a block of material, so I'm doing that one. And then I just got to specify things like how wide is the block? It's a three inch wide block. It's got a Y uh, width, whatever you call it, two inches. It's two by three. Uh, I want to go down, measure a half inch down, that's fine. And I don't want to offset, I don't want to change my zero values, I want to just keep them right there. And let's go send the tool home. I'm just going to grab out the next tool, tool two. All right, so there's my program in memory that um, we were looking at earlier with that G13. Um, I've already proofed the program, but let's, you know, always just double check. I'm just going to draw it in graphics. Yep, looks like the way it is. Cool. And then go back to memory and cycle start. I'm going to bring up my position screen so I know my next move, what's going to do. Right, it's doing the first layer and so you can see how it's it incremented the width of cut. So it's just taking off an extra 0.1 with each pass. There's a new depth, went down a hundred thou. And it's doing this three times, so it's got one more after this. And I don't use any coolant, I'm cutting wax. I need to find a way to recover all the wax so I can make new wax. I would buy a bunch of old candles, huh? <laughs> Let's take a look at it. And there you see our uh, perfectly made pocket. Da -da -da -da. All right, so hopefully you learned something new today. All about that G13, doesn't it?